know, we were at our wits end. He said, bah, 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 bah. So we tried to catch another flight, and he got our information because he was going to pitch us an idea. He said, yeah, he had a lot of scripts he wanted to pitch us. And he goes, oh, man, I can't make guys announce that that guy's got my phone number. I was like, you get a good number? <laughs> Because he had a jet phone, so Jeff was like, okay, here you go. And he had to me, he's like, oh, God, okay. And he's like, no, man, I just gave my email address. I was like, damn it. So, but, and then it came in handy. Because when we were waiting on that other one, I said, you know, you gotta call. You gotta call. You gotta call, you gotta call the dude. It's happening. I was like, oh, no. So I called, so now we're buddies. Yeah. Anyway, good times. But we're here now. Yeah. Jeff Priest. Yeah. Yeah. Stars with Jeff and Vincent Priest. Thanks, guys. Oh, really nice to be here. Like, really nice to be here. Yeah. Didn't know if it was going to happen. Yeah. And uh, all things considering, a couple hours, a few hours sleep, I'm feeling pretty damn good. Yeah. 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 Uh, let's Same see. thing happened to me. I heard that you guys uh, won the Super Bowl or something here in Washington. Yeah. Let's see what's going on today. Uh, oh, I think as we speak, I'm on television right now. Uh, pr premiere my newest character, and the Young and the Restless. Oh, cool. Thanks. There's that. Uh, my mom and her friends are so cute. They had like a, her friends through this premiere party, and. She made a red carpet all the way up to her front door. <laughs> and she made a, a little roped off section of the VIP entrance for my mother. <laughs> God bless them all. All right, so far so good, huh? Uh, do, so we, do we go right up with questions? Or does anybody have any questions? Please. All right, okay. one, we have one we have a question. <laughs> Get comfortable. How are you? I'm fantastic. Um, I was just curious um, when you were like trying to get characters, mm -hmm. like who was your inspiration for the, the actor? Well, it originated because they gave a reference which I thought was was good. It was uh, this was before all this shit went down? Frank Underwood, Kevin Spacey, and House of Cards. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know the draw that's kind of started from him, and then and then I, you know, and all that shit happened, and I was like, yeah, let me let me switch it up a little bit, uh, and then I just started drawing from my from when I went to Orleans. Just I loved hearing that accent down there. It's just every time somebody would talk, I'd be like, hold on, hold on, hang on. Hang on. Sweet music. <laughs> so I pulled a lot from uh, my my visits to Nolans. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Going back and forth. Hi. So I. Reenactment. No. I I love John General Hospital. Oh, thanks. And had you asked me when I when you were on there that you sounded like this in your day to day life, I never would have guessed that. And then I, I see you on Supernatural, I'm like, no, that's not right. And he has that. He doesn't sound like that. How do you do such good accents? Now, how do you know this is my real voice? I don't. I'm questioning everything. Good. That's the point. Question everything. Uh, I, I don't know. It's and here's the thing. It's like I can't do like people have asked, you know, how many accents, can, and I don't know how many accents I can do, but I can't do them all. There are some that I just can't get. I think it's like rhythms or something. But then there are others that I just feel like I just pick up immediately and go, oh, yeah, I got that. I'm mimicking sort of thing. Saying. But if it's all cadences, and I, I just I love hearing people talk, and I love hearing. People most different rhythms and cadences and the way they'll say certain words is I think it's fascinating. Do you ever use like a speech therapist or anything like that? No. no. Yeah. 
I just, a lot of times I'll look at, like, she was asking, like, references or something. And if it's good, if, if I've heard it before, maybe in a movie or something, I'll go to that and listen to, pick out different things in movies. But like with Carlos, for instance, uh, this was a character on General Hospital. He was uh, from Puerto Rico. And so I, I did the first couple episodes, and then I took that, the paychecks from that, and I went to Puerto Rico. And learned about the food and the culture, and just, just kind of sunk into it. But I, one thing I did a lot was listen to people, and I recorded people. I recorded waiters and stuff. With their consent. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, it's a process that I really enjoy. Sometimes it's like, especially the ones that I don't, that I know that I'm maybe not that good at, it's, it's a puzzle. See, like I did a, I can't do it right now, but I had, uh, I was preparing for a, a character for a, a Russian. And that was one that I thought I couldn't do. But then after a lot of practice and, and research, I had, Sounds like pretty good, I, I think. Can't do it right now, forget it. And I'm on two hours sleep, so it would probably butcher the Russian accent right now. But yeah, there you go. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hi, what Hi. is your biggest differences between daytime and prime time? Biggest differences between daytime and prime time is the pace. Uh, that's the biggest difference. Like with, with daytime, you get one, Take. And when I say one take, I mean you get the words out of your mouth. You're like, okay, yeah, we got that. Let's go. Let's move it on. Yeah, but I got. Are we gonna do cover? Like, so with prime time, there's there's coverage. You'll do a master shot. Sometimes you'll even nail it on that first take. You'll be like, all right, let's do just one more for safety. Okay, so then you do the master shot, and then they get coverage, and they get the medium shot, so you can do it again. Oh, you find something there. And then they get the close-up. And then you do it again, you find something there. And a lot of times they'll do two or three or four of those takes until you get it just right. But with daytime, you gotta you have to be over prepared. You got to you also have to uh, rely on your creative instinct. Like that was something when I first got into it. I, I, you just have to trust that all the years of acting and training have paid off to get to a point where you can just trust yourself with what you've done and not get hung up on it. That's the big thing. Because the pace is so fast, like when I first started doing it, I go out, you know, go into my car going, hang on, I can do that. Gosh, I can't do that. Better now, now. That was it. That's it. And you get caught up on scenes that you've already done. With now, I, it's, after doing it for a little bit, you're able to just you do it and you let it go. You do it and you let it go. And it keeps you very present in every scene that you do. Um. Oh, and the pay is a lot better in prime time. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> How are you? Good. So obviously in Supernatural, nothing is really ever gone. Yeah. So there's always the opportunity into this being the final season for things to happen. If you were able to bring your character back, would you be the same evil person you were, or would you try and help the boys at the end in some way, or would you make it even more of a struggle for them? I mean, you mean my preference? Yes, that, yes, that, your that, absolute preference. My preference would be I come back badder and more evil than ever. <laughs> Star, all scarred up from the fire. Like, you thought you'd kill me? <laughs> it's made me more powerful. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Um, how do you feel about the evil Colonel Sanders reference? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Is there something? Somebody's calling me an eagle. What? No, because, like, did you know that they were going to call you that, or did they just call you that? And you're like, what? Uh, I think Twitter started that, and then it somehow got worked into the script. So, shame on you all. But I, I don't see the resemblance. 
I don't. Know. He has a black tie. As my dad has a white tie. <laughs> he has a uh, one of those like those ties that go like, like that. As my dad has a nice silk straight tie. Uh, the Colonel Sanders has a, a goatee. As my dad has a full beard. Colonel Sanders has glasses. As my dad can see with yellow eyes. And as well as hates chicken. <laughs> right, thank you. Yeah. So I'm from Hershey, Pennsylvania. All right. And I work in a history museum about Milton Hershey. So my question is, if something of yours was going to be put in a museum, what would you want it to be and why? My paintings. Uh, but, I don't know, it would be, I think it would probably be the Naked and Famous series of my paintings, to be specific. So I've been doing this, uh, I don't know if, if you all know, but I've also painted it, and I've been doing that for over 20 years. Thank you. And there's one in particular series that I've been doing called Naked and Famous, and it's, it's life-sized portraits of people that I've met throughout my life, and it's... I've been doing it for 16 or 17 years now. And now I go off and I'll venture into other series. I paint a lot of animals, and or, or I'll paint a series of faces, or I'll, I'll venture from that particular series, but this one is the one that I really found myself as a painter, and I discovered who I was. And it originated, the, the inspiration behind it was for the first time I went to Burning Man which was 2000, when it was still counterculture, and nobody knew about it, like it wasn't in the newspaper of my parents' retirement community. <laughs> uh, yeah, my parents' friends are talking about Burning Man now, so it's still really cool, but it's not counterculture, it's, now it's mainstream. Uh, and anyway, the first day I was there, it's really hot during the day, it's in the desert, and I'm looking around and everybody has their shirt off, and at first I was like... <laughs> but then, you know, because I was raised in America, and that's, you see a pair of breasts and everybody freaks out. But then, you know, after a few hours, and you're looking around, and you're saying, this is like, oh, this is how it should be, it's hot! Everybody should be able to take their shirt off and not be threatened by some sort of sexual aggression. And that's what, that's what, that, that's what that atmosphere was, it was beautiful. And so, that's what these paintings are. These are people that, friends and uh, lovers, and people that I've just known for the past 15, 17 years will come and they'll take their shirt off, or not, and the rest of their accoutrements are there, their tattoos or necklaces or hats or whatever they want to adorn themselves with. And they stand with their heart open, and I do a portrait of them. It's life size, and to date there's about 100 50 of those. So, in a museum, when I so when I display them, if I have a show, what I'd like to do, what I like to do is, uh, however big the walls are, that's how big the display can be. That's that's how many of them there are. So I'll stack them like. I think the most I've been able to do is three up because they're four foot tall. You go three up or no four up, and then all right beside each other. You it can be. Long and massive, so it's create it's it's capturing a community and a moment in time of humanity that I hope will stand the test of time. That is really cool. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. So I'm like the supernatural fandom. So I knew you as Carlos Rivera under the house. Sabrina! What did you like most about working on General Hospital and who do you wish you worked with more on General Hospital? I I really liked playing a character for that long. It was it was a three and a half year run. But with that, that's like with for those of you who know soaps, they issue an episode a day. So that's a lot. I think I did over a hundred and 50, I think, something like that. And 
to be able to play a character for that long, you learn so much more about the intricacies of building a character, and and then you learn. I learn a lot about myself because you have to, a lot of times you have to pull from what's what's within. And there was there were sometimes I'd get a script and I'd be like, he wouldn't say this, he wouldn't do this. And I there was one actor, Jason Thompson. He's on. He's a phenomenal actor. He's on Young and the Restless now, which Eric. Oh, yeah, I already said that. Uh, but anyway, I took that to him and I was like, uh, he wouldn't. He wouldn't say this. And he goes, How do you know he would? Well, what the fuck is that? He goes, Well, maybe he would. Maybe this is a side of him that you haven't thought of yet. And it made me realize, yeah, you're playing a, a, a character for that long, you can put those things in. Just like all of it's like we're, we're so unpredictable. Once we think we know who we are, all of a sudden we might we might do something that even surprises us. Like, I can't believe I just did that. So that's yeah, that's what I like most about it, is being able to dive deep into uh, a character. But I truly enjoyed that guy. I liked I liked who he was. I could find the justifications in that just about everything we did. Um, and who do I wish I worked with more? Uh, possibly Finola Hughes. I mean, we did a lot of great scenes together, but she's, woo, she's so good. She's so good. She will do scenes that I go, God, you take that scene. And then we're talking one take. One take. You take that scene, you put it in a movie, you put it in a theater. She's winning an Academy Award every year in one take. Thank you. <laughs> well, you said you paint as a hobby. Yes. What kind of paint do you like to use? I like to switch it up. I like uh, my, the, the ones the ones that I was talking about, the naked and famous, and a lot of other ones. I'll do uh, acrylic paint for the background. I'll make an abstract painting with acrylics because it dries quickly. And then the foreground will be oil. But I also would like to challenge myself and do things like, um, there's a lot of animal paintings. That I brought some paintings, by the way, so you guys will get to see them. I don't know where they're going to set them up yet. I don't know if it's going to be in vending or uh, during autographs, but I'll, there will be a table that I brought a bunch of small ones, a, a suitcase. And you'll see some of them are on wood panels. And I'll, I'll take charcoal pencils and draw it out and then take acrylic paint and paint in the colors. And because it's on wood, I'll blend a lot of times with sandpaper, get a nice little shading going with that. So I just I like to experiment. I don't like to stick to just one thing. I, I feel like even after all this time painting, every time I started painting, I, I, I truly, after this is after 20 years of doing it, I, I don't feel like I know exactly what I'm doing. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, Aw. So what's the pup's I, name? His name's Sarge. What's up, Sarge? I'm not sure what's coming from. Neither do I. Look at yours. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Can I pet him? Um, if you want to. Excuse me. <laughs> There's a sign on that says, please don't pet me. You can put it here, did you? Did you, have, did you have a question? <laughs> I think my dog likes you. Yeah, I like your dog too. Um, so my question was, um, I was just wondering uh, how you felt about the interaction that went on between Asmund Ace and Gabriel. Huh. I hated it. <laughs> I mean, at the end, of course. Um, 
I mean, at first, it was great. <laughs> I was getting all my powers from them. Um, Two hours sleep, so I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, what's going on, man? Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting the various. <laughs> Karaoke should be really interesting tonight. Was your reaction to like when you read the script and you read the death scene and like sort of as an actor? Here's the reenactment. Fuck yeah, here's the new episode. Sweet. Oh, this is amazing. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, 
I thought, uh, here's the, here, the funny thing is about the whole Crowley thing is, is when I when I did get get the gig and I'm doing all the research and all that stuff, and checking him out as a basketball character, all the reactions, you know, the fans going, "You'll never be Crowley, Crowley for life, motherfucker." <laughs> but then I started going, maybe they are trying to fill that spot. <laughs> Short-lived. <laughs> so, yeah. Thanks. Hi, Jen. Nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you. Um, so, as with this, got some pretty cool action scenes, like beating up cats and stuff like that. Yeah. So I was wondering if you could talk about how filming those went. Oh, that was awesome. That was so cool. Uh, first of all, David is amazing to work with. Like, we had so much fun doing that, because he likes to we really get into the subtext of everything. And, and he's just so much fun to bounce off of. And so that was like, that was like a dance. That felt like a dance, a choreographed dance. And it's cool because sometimes, a lot of times, you know, characters or actors will kind of get in their own ego when they're getting their ass kicked. <laughs> and not David. You know, he really just let me beat the shit up. <laughs> And, and you know, made me look, made me look good. Uh, he made himself incredibly light, you know, when I had to pick him up over my head like that. <laughs> I was like, oh, I got, I got tricks. Oh, okay. So I was able to just, you know, and slam him down. Um, yeah, it was fun. You know, I like, uh, you know, do that kind of stuff. And nobody gets hurt. It's cathartic. One of my favorite scenes. And I, I didn't even get to see it until it aired. That's when I walked in the bar and looked at the dude and just went. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that brought me so much joy because I couldn't I couldn't see it not when we shot it. There was there was nobody there was nobody there. Like the guy was standing there, you know, he was doing his thing, just sort of washing a, a dish or something. And then you know he he moved him, and, and I, so all I all for me was just this. And they had the sound effects. <laughs> Oh, and for like a week after that, I'm walking around, people piss me off. Like, Thank you. Thanks. Hello. Hi. So when you first did the scenes with Rich, did you have any idea of the backstory of his character, how big of a deal it was for the fandom that he was actually coming back? No. <laughs> Uh, I was told, I was told, like, yeah, no, this guy, they love him, and, like, it's gonna be this big reveal, because I was like, man, this, this actor's being really dramatic about his whole life. Dude, come on, man, relax. Since Richard can't be here, the man of Jeffrey Vincent Parisi will be playing him. <laughs> he got his though, right? He got his revenge. <laughs> He's like... <laughs> Shit. Got me. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. So you mentioned your mom. And as a mom of two sons, I know sometimes I feel a little awkward when someone may make a comment about my son. Yeah. Like, oh, he's ham handsome. Has your mom ever had that? Because she has a red carpet. She seems very proud of you. <laughs> yeah, no, she's not felt the dad. <laughs> yes, he is. Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, she, so uh, I got, I was nominated for a daytime Emmy. And I took my parents to the awards. <laughs> and I'm telling you, uh, she was way more excited about the whole thing than I was. It was, <laughs> it was great. <laughs> it was really great to see. Um, yeah, I hope. <laughs> I hope that she gets, 
If she was, she got. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I see. I see. Yeah. Like if one of her friends is like, "Oh damn, your son." Damn. <laughs> It's just something called. Yeah, I think my mom might knock a bitch out. Thank you. <laughs> So, I know that you're musical, mm -hmm. but I haven't heard you sing. I just heard you do the drums. Do you sing? Come to karaoke and find out. <laughs> will you be at the concert tomorrow night? Will you be playing? Yes, I will. I brought my drum. I brought my drum. Have drum well traveled. Okay. Speaking of which, I don't know if we have time for this. Uh, do you guys want to hear one of my favorite travel stories? So I was kind of reminded of it last night because of the, this long, insane delay. So I was in Spain. I went to Spain. And I was, uh, I went, I was going from Ibiza to Barcelona. And I had never been to either one. My flight was to get in at 1 a.m. Uh, the plan was get a cheap hostel in, down in Barcelona, get a few hours sleep, wake up, go to my Airbnb and start my Barcelona adventure. I get in at one. And I'd had a couple drinks on the plane. Started the party early. It's all nice and buzzed. And I was like, all right, just grab a taxi into town. And what's that? What? Taxi strike? <laughs> okay, I'll just take the subway. What's that? Subway's closed? Okay, I'll just take the bus. That's the line for the bus. It was insanely long. Now, uh, contrary to uh, popular belief, I do not speak fluent Spanish. <laughs> and I didn't have phone service. I didn't have an international plan. So, I typed the name of my hostel into my phone. And I was on this app that was able to, I was able to, you could follow the blue dot, like wherever you're going to go. So I waited and then a possibly long line. Finally got on a bus. Goes to the Barcelona, they're like, you gotta get up through a lot of broken uh, translation and trying to talk to people. I was told then I gotta get on another bus. And I get out and now it's at about, it's probably about 3.15 in the morning. I get off the first bus, there's nobody around. I'm in Barcelona in a place where I had no idea what kind of area this is. And I asked, I said, excuse me, I think I gotta get on B bus B. I'm weak. That's supposed to be three right there. Okay, thank you. I run, I chase down the bus, I get on that bus, I finally get out. Now it's four in the morning and I'm still, still on track with this blue dot. Four in the morning, this blue dot takes me to this area that is on the, on the app, it's all green. And I walk, I got my drum and I got my bag that I'm carrying. And I look up and it looks like Central Park at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> Dimly lit, kind of a, a foresty park. And so I look this way, I look this way, and I see nothing but homeless people sleeping. And then, oh, there's some, there's some live people, and it's these two dudes and this woman cracked out on, like, looking at what the homeless people have, like, what do they got? What do they got? Like, looking for what they got. And meanwhile, I have everything on me. I got my passport, my cash, my suitcase, my drums. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to the park. So I went into the park. Here comes the tourist. I could feel the eyes on me. It's just like, God, it's a, I almost felt like I could see them glowing in the bushes. <laughs> I was just like, don't panic, please fear, stay away, do not come in. And I kept walking and kept walking, and it's got me now that I'm, I'm, the little blue dot is a little off the path. So I, I, I go up this, next thing you know, I'm climbing stairs. 
and it looks like a, a wall of a castle. At this point, it's quarter to five in the morning now, and I'm seriously considering finding a bush to kind of sleep in, <laughs> pick this up tomorrow morning, and then I had the vision of <laughs> I don't want to wake up that way. So I keep walking, and all of a sudden, I hear something very familiar. No way. And I walk up, and I, and I round this corner, and there's this plateau, and there's downtown Barcelona blowing in the, in the distance. And over here, there's a bench, and there's a, a, a street light shining down on that bench, just like in a movie. And there's a guy sitting there, playing guitar. And there's another guy standing over him, singing. Nobody else around. Five in the morning. And I said, all right, this could go one of two ways. <laughs> <laughs> Hola. Buenas noches. Huh. Okay. Uh, uh, you guys know where Hostel Miramont is? Like, oh, no, no, I said, habla inglés. <laughs> si? Uh, I said, where are you coming from? I said, Los Angeles. Are you lost? So lost. Where do you need to go? And I look at them and I said, music first. Yeah. Took off my drum. They're like, oh, Jimmy! <laughs> so now we go over to this bench and he says, uh, would you like something to drink? And he's got this Spanish vermouth in a plastic uh, water bottle, but it's cold. And I, yes, please. What was that? <laughs> Tells me Spanish movie. So then I start drumming, he starts playing, this guy starts singing, it's five in the morning, and it sounds so beautiful. And I thought to myself, this is why I travel. <laughs> Hi. It's hard to follow that story. <laughs> uh, so there is an episode in season 12 when Ramiel is telling Crowley he should go ahead and be king of hell. None of the princes um, are interested. He says, Dagon has her toys. Asmodeus has his hobbies. Yes. yes. I'm wondering what hobbies you think Asmodeus was up to. And he would rather do those than hell. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is all guesses. Sure, sure. Uh, I, you know, I think Asmodee has probably experimented a lot with different types of angel grace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of, uh, uh, probably a lot of psychological extracurricular, like, we're, we're like, <laughs> Yeah. Extracurricular? Yes. Okay. okay. Activities, hobbies. Yeah. I don't think any of them are good. I have a feeling it might be something a little tortury. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I probably got into that too. Really? You know, yeah, actually. I'm going to have to change my answer. <laughs> Torture people. <laughs> For fun, obviously. Yeah. That's how we knew how to sew up the lips and do all the stuff with. David, call him David. We'll call him David, because that's his name. Hi. Hello, how are you? Good. Awesome. So, my question was, like, what was the weirdest... Oh, by the way, you're hilarious and a really cool person. Just want to say that. Um, but... Thanks. Maybe uh, like, the weirdest fan experience, like, interaction that you ever had? a really weird gift you might have received from a fan? Worse than this one right now. <laughs> I'll, I'll stretch. Um, let's see. Uh, weird interactions. I mean, define weird. Um, like... Because 
Um, I'll, use I, 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 I'll use an example. Uh, I remember like hearing a story from Norman Reedus where like a gift that he got was a breast implant. <laughs> so, like, Man, <laughs> See, yeah, that's one of the other differences between prime time and daytime. Is, like, <laughs> the gifts are a lot better. Um, have I gotten anything weird like that? Uh, yeah, damn. I gotta catch up with Norman Reedus. Uh, let's see. You know, I, I actually received a lot of really wonderful gifts. Like, there's, there's, I mean, there's been a lot, but there's, there's one, um, this Russian girl drew this incredible portrait of Asmodeus, and it's now, it's like the, it's like the profile picture for my, for my Instagram. But, when I commented on it, told her how much I liked it, she sent it to me from Russia. <laughs> and apparently she, they had to go through a whole thing with the Russian people, <laughs> government looking at it, and why have you sending this to America? <laughs> and she, she had to go through a whole process to, to get it to me, it's, but she did. And it's, uh, it's, it hangs in my house now. Yeah, and she painted the eyes gold, so they, so they shine. Yeah, yeah, a lot of really wonderful gifts. A lot of uh, fan art has really blown me away. Like, I keep thinking to paint a portrait of Asmodeus, but then I see what everybody else is doing, and I'm like, ah, yeah, they, they got it, they got it covered. <laughs> Awesome, thank you, and thanks for the laughs, I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Hi. Um, I was wondering, if you were the king of hell versus Sam, Dean Winchester, hopped up on Dean and Blood, and Dean Winchester with the Mark King and the Knight, who would win? First of all, cool hair, dude. Thanks. Seriously. And, uh, you know, come on, man, who are you talking to? Ask about this, we win every time. <laughs> but you can never know. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I know. <laughs> Did you see what he could do to Lucifer? <laughs> <laughs> Lucifer! <laughs> yeah, but then you gotta know, remember Sam has powers with popped up on demon blood? Yeah. And from when he was using the knife, he was very skilled based at it. Yeah, but okay, here's what you gotta understand. <laughs> I start out with demon blood running through my body. And I add angel grace to that and Gah! every time that's my days, every time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I shut down that argument real quick, didn't I? I was wondering, in high school, were you a band geek, or were you a nerd, or were you a theater kid, or what kind of group did you hang out with? I was, uh, got into a lot of trouble. <laughs> um, and I was, I would, it's a mix of a lot of things, actually. Early high school, I, I, I tried to be a jock, that didn't really work. Uh, mid high school, I got, I found, I discovered uh, under 21 dance clubs. And so I'd go every weekend with groups from all, a bunch of other high schools, and we'd form these like dance gangs. Two, you know, two Fresh Express, you know, you get these like little songs going, it's hot, it's hot. It's hot in here. Say what? It must be too fresh in the atmosphere. Senior year of high school really started like really bubbling, and that's when I discovered acting and feeling like feeling like there's more, there's there's there's, there's other levels to this. 
And so when did you start painting? How old were you? Uh, well, I always drew as a kid, and then that, that, I, I stopped, and then I didn't pick that up again until, until really about 20, 21, 22, and then it didn't get serious until 26, when I went to Europe for the first time. I had, uh, I had booked a film, the shot in Berlin, and I had never been to Europe, so I asked uh, them to pay me in cash and fly me out of Prague two months later. And so then I took that cash and I, I traveled here, backpacked here by myself. And I went to all the, the museums that I could. And that's when I really got to see some of these master paintings for the first time in real life. And there were some of them that just did something, really stirred something deep within me. And a lot of, a lot of it, I think, was just kind of discovering who I was as a, as a, as a man and, and seeing some of these paintings knowing that this this artist is long dead but yet there's this thing that they left for everybody else to this thing still participates in the human experience and it, you know there were times where i was feeling lonely on that trip and and i wasn't feeling so lonely when i'm looking at these paintings i could i could i could relate to somebody who had been here before and realize ah it's so fleeting it's so fleeting Let's just have fun and create and, and mix colors around and yeah, that, that was that. That's that's where I took my vows as a painter was that that European trip. And when I came back, I have not stopped painting since. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, all right. Some good questions. Um. Did, did Jeremy Jensen play any tricks on me when you were on it? No. Uh, no. No. Well, not, no. Actually, no, I wasn't, I wasn't on there long enough for them to play any tricks on me. Okay. Yeah. Um, what was your favorite part about uh, playing as Mateus? Uh, I'd say all of it. Uh, all of it. I really liked it all. I enjoyed every word that he said. Uh, oh, you have another question. Hi. Hello, how are you? Good. Thanks for being here. You're awesome, by the way. Oh, thanks. Um, so, out of anyone that, that you could um, work with in acting and whatnot, is, who is your like ultimate people? Wow. Big. Hey, you mean other actor, director? Actor to me, yeah. Actors, okay. Actors, I'd love to be able to act with Daniel Day Lewis. What a master craftsman he is. <sighs> love to be able to act with Joaquin Phoenix. What a master craftsman he is. Uh, Natalie Portman, I think she's really incredible and up to big things. Um, I mean, uh, there's so there's so many. Sean Penn, I think he's just so like aggro and everything that he is. He's man, there's so much going on in that. But... <laughs> 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 I'm taking questions. Do you have any questions? <laughs> you are running out of questions. Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Do you use beard softener? I know I just started to use beard oil. That's a very good question. Thank you. Thanks. I just started using it. This actually makes me feel. I saw you using that backstage. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. just, just. <laughs> That's exactly what it sounded like. <laughs> it sounded moist. Yeah, it was. That's what that was. <laughs> Well, anyway, guys, uh, how'd, how'd it go? How'd it go? Man, I feel great. These guys are amazing. That's another good question. Good. Good. Yeah. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, Jeffrey Vincent Paris.
guys. Next up, we have a little game for you. Uh, 